views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi, I'm Eileen Newman, your host for Mission Bronx, and today we're visiting Hunts Point Alliance for Children, a wonderful organization that works with families, other community organizations, and schools to enhance the educational capacity of the children of Hunts Point. I'm sitting here with Jill Roach, who's the Executive Director of Hunts Point Alliance for Children. Good morning. Jill, thank you. Thank you for letting us come and visit this wonderful place. Oh, we're so glad you're here. So, yes, me too. So tell me about the Hunts Point Alliance for Children and what are all the programs that happen here? Sure, the Hunts Point Alliance for Children began 10 years ago and we really have two roles within the Hunts Point community. First of all, we convene the seven schools that are physically located here as well as the 10 to 12 community-based organizations that serve children in the area. And we focus just on the Hunts Point Peninsula, the 10474 zip code, not the entire community board district. Um, and secondly, we have direct service programming that we work with all children, zero to 18, that either live or go to school here in the neighborhood. And that's primarily composed of three teams of our staff. There's our early childhood team, which you're seeing today. Um, and then we also have a fourth through 12th grade program, which we call our Community to College Initiative, which is a series of programs focusing on literacy and building self-confidence that work with students from all the local schools in order to prepare them for, for college or careers. So how do you find these kids, or how do they actually find you? So mostly our programs are word of mouth. Um, we have three main programs that our early childhood team runs, and the first is what you're here to visit today, the Family School Skills, and we've created a continuum around the Family School Skills program. So the main focus is the eight-week class that builds on executive functioning skills, and it's for caregivers and children zero to four, and during the course of the eight weeks, even though we call it Family School Skills, it's not really about ABCs or one, two, threes. It's more about working with parents and their, and their little ones to explore and to to, um, to work on characteristics such as focus and perseverance and today we're going to be looking at connection making using the hungry caterpillar. And how old are these little people? It's a great range. It's, um, it's zero to three um, primarily and then sometimes we have an older skewed class which will be three and four. And the way that we recruit is that we have an open once a week program on Friday mornings called Fantastic Reading, which runs the same eight weeks as the Family School Skills session. And we invite any parent from the community who's either on the waiting list for Family School Skills or just wants to try it out to drop in and come and play with us. And we do some songs, we practice circle time. And then we also invite them to participate in our lending library. And then when there's a space in the Family School Skills program, we invite them to join us. And that's an eight week program with a curriculum that's cumulative. And families often want to do the program twice, and that's okay. We let families do the Family School Skills program twice. And then afterwards, we invite them to be a part of what we call our Advanced FSS program. And Advanced FSS is really about growing a community of involved and engaged parents. And so the parents can take turns um, presenting what they've learned or what they're doing with their kids to the other parents. So what other spaces do you have that Hunts Point Alliance for Children uses? Sure, well, so we have our main office in the Banknote Building, which is on Lafayette Street. Um, and then we also work with all of the schools for space. So we are partnered with MS424 in Grand Wyndham okay, to run so the Shakespeare the Society. And we work very closely with St. Ignatius uh, for our storefront program, which is our seventh and eighth grade program, where the students move from Shakespeare, where they're learning about universal themes and learning literacy and acting others' words to writing their own narratives. Then we work with all of our eighth graders to help them apply for high school and make sure that they get into competitive high schools. And we work with them in different ways throughout high school, primarily through our community service team. But where we really focus a lot of attention is with our college access program. Beginning in their junior year, we're helping them write their college essay, helping them complete their college lists, and making sure that they're hitting all the deadlines. 
and it's been really successful. We have our very first year of Shakespeare. Students are currently sophomores in college. There's 16 of them. Wow. And this year, the graduating high school class of 2017, we're so excited that we have three Posse Scholars, as well as two HEOP Scholars, and a young man that'll be going to Kenyon on a full scholarship. Oh, how great. Congratulations. Thank you. So you're really following families through. I mean, you can potentially get them as little as this and then work with them right through college. That's exactly our that's ultimate wonderful. vision, that we would work with every child all 18 years. Yeah, that's great. Do you have to be part of the eight-week program to use the library here? They don't have to be part of the eight-week program. We usually ask them to come to one of our drop-in programs just so that we know them with their contact information. But yes, and the lending library is open. And as I said earlier, you know, we, are a, we are an alliance and we collaborate with all of our partners. And so we've also done different programs in collaboration with other alliance partners. So for example, we had the Hyde High School students who were coming here last year every Friday and checking out books that then they would read to their younger siblings or cousins. Nice. I see the boats here. I recognize them. They've been made by a partner organization, right? Yes, that was a program that we did several years ago when we were just opening this space, which is actually known in the community as the boat because we're sitting on the deck of a 10-foot life-size boat in the building. And so we asked Adam Green and his team at Rocking the Boat to build us these smaller boats that are behind us, and they were created specifically for the zero to three-year-olds. How many kids actually come through here? This year we've had so far uh, 27 families uh, participate in family school skills, but we're enrolling new students in the library about an average of five a month, and this year our numbers are up about 11%. We've already um, lent over 1,500 books this year, this academic year. That's wonderful. Where do you get the books for the library? We have a partnership with the Barnard Toddler Center, and every year they do a Christmas drive for our, for our kids, which has been amazing. And which has enabled us to really expand our library. And then in addition, we have donations from individuals, from Scholastic, and really when we're looking for high quality books and people just really respond and open up to that idea of sharing the love of learning and reading with little kids. And so now when the kids are here today, these little ones that we're going to be seeing, how long do they come in and, and do whatever they're doing here? So the family school skills sessions are eight weeks of a two hour program twice a week. And they focus on one skill each week, and they work at, look at two books, and then at the end of each week, on the second session, they actually get to take the book home, so that when they finish the eight-week session, they have their own mini-library. So it really also makes the idea of, of having a book to be such a special thing, because it, you grow into the, the idea that you, that you can keep it, and you can have that. So tell me about the other programs for the, the kids of different ages that you do. Sure. Um, in our 4th, 5th, and 6th grade program, we, ha we work with the Shakespeare Society for the Hunts Point Children's Shakespeare Ensemble, and that brings together students from four of the local elementary and middle schools, and we spend an entire year completing a Shakespeare production. So this year we're doing Romeo and Juliet. It's all in the original Elizabethan language. It's not cut out, um, and the kids are amazing. The thing that's most amazing about it is that most of the kids, their first year in the acting ensemble, their 5th grade year, they don't think that they can do it. They join, but you know, perseverance is such an important skill and so it's something that we're really fostering with the kids. But yet when they make it and the day after that final production, you can just see their whole way that they carry themselves change. It's such an important moment and their parents are in the audience. It's fantastic. Do these kids have relationships? Do they hang out afterwards? Do the parents get to know each other? That's one of our goals, really, is not that we're just a service provider, but that we're creating a community culture of early childhood engagement. And actually, several of the parents that are involved in our advanced program have um, started to get together on Wednesdays and take trips around the Bronx. I heard that last week they went to the Botanical Gardens. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you. We'll, we'll, this will be fun to, to talk to some of the parents and to see what the kids are doing, what all that excitement is down there. So. <laughs> There's a lot happening down there. Yeah, so we'll see all of this. Thanks, Thanks Lily. From the north to the south to the west to the east, we are expanding our services and upgrading technology at Lehman College. And now, Bronxites have an innovative media production facility in the East Bronx at Mercy College in the Hutch Metro Center. The windows on the East Bronx studio, a state-of-the-art control room, media labs for production and training, 
and other media-capable spaces. Training, workforce development, leading-edge technology, and programs that help you share your ideas, your voice, on your channels, locally and globally. Build media and technology skills at BronxNet and build your dreams. If you want to stay in the know about the latest happenings in Espanol, check out Dialogo Abierto, BronxNet's own Spanish show, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Channel 67. The latest in news, arts, culture, politics, and what's going on in your neighborhood. Dialogo Abierto, the best way to stay connected in Spanish. See you there. Te esperamos. Hey, I'm Darren Jaime. I'm the host of Wednesday's Open right here on BronxNet Television, Channel 67, and also on Verizon Files, Channel 33. Want to invite you every Wednesday, you get an opportunity to see what's going on in the world of news, current events, debates, public information. That's what happens here on Open every Wednesday. So we invite you to join us right here on BronxNet Television. Good morning, my name is Patricia Rodas and I am the early childhood associate at the library. And you have a very special job here. We've, we've kind of taken the library and moved it up here, but I know it's much bigger downstairs. Yes, it's much bigger. Um, at this point, it has uh, 1,400 books. Um, I will say 40% of those books are bilingual. And, and the reason for having uh, bilingual books is because most of the families that we serve in this community are Spanish speakers. And so, can you tell me about the books that are some for little ones and some for older children? So, how do you arrange them and can you tell me all about that? Yes, the books that the library has are for children who are zero years up to, let's say, seven or eight years old. Ah. And so, so the, these li the little ones, the ones that are one, the ones that are two, how do you see them enjoying books? Is it like the color? What is it that makes them like it? Most of the books for, for babies or for children, let's say, that are on the two, most of them are picture books and as you could see, the babies doesn't know how to read yet. So that's why the books are, have more pictures. And so the babies could focus on the pictures and the mothers or whoever is reading the books, they could talk to them about the pictures, about the colors, about different shapes. And, uh, and that's how the babies will be acquiring new, new vocabulary. So the the packages that you put to, do you put all the, the packages together those clear book bags with different types of books? Yes, um, every week the parents that come to um, a program that is called Family School Skill Sessions every Wednesday they take out a book bag. This is the book bag that they take out. Um, it has four books and. Um, I have around 22 book bags, half of them in Spanish, half of them English. Um, and the books are, the, the book bags are prepared in a way that have books for very small children and also for children who are above maybe um, four years. Because this program, the program that I mentioned before, 
it only serves children from zero to four. And so you, but you make the choices of the books and you put these together? Yes, I do it. And I had to rotate these books every session. So the parents who come twice uh, to the same sessions, they don't get the same books. Oh. And that must be so much fun to see them coming. Do they talk to you about the books? Do the yes, ones? especially the ones, uh, the ones that have uh, some toys and activities inside uh. because these book bags have toys and cars, toys that are related to the books. Oh, so this has uh, these toys uh, that come inside with the book bag. And there are some cards also in here with suggested activities for the children. This card and, and the toys are related to the main book on the book bag. That's wonderful. How did you get involved with this program and did you want to be a librarian? No, I didn't. <laughs> I live in the community and uh, I knew about Homes Point Alliance for Children and uh, my, my aunt, who is a, a member of one of the programs, she got me in connection uh, with HPAC and I started knowing them and then they started knowing me and from there that's how I came to, to HPAC. I've been um, doing this job for the past five years. What's your favorite part about being part of this program? My favorite part is when I find out that the kids are getting promoted from from one grade to another grade. That's when I you see them grow up. Yes, and you yes. know, and mm -hmm. you know that you help them. Yes, that's that's yes. wonderful. So when you came here, were you hired to do this or to do other jobs? But then you just enjoyed this, so they. I was I was hired to do both. Ah. I was hired to do the library and a little bit of outreach. Right. And the outreach, I I feel that is that is being very uh, successful because I live in the community and, um, and for some reason I, I know a lot of people in the community. My kids also go to the school in the community so I know a lot of parents from the school, from two schools because I have two daughters and both of them go to different schools so I know parents from two schools. And I also do a lot of volunteer hours at the school, and that's how I know more people too. Yeah, so then you can encourage people to come and do this. So, yes. so what would you like to see this library transformed into if you could have anything you wanted in this library? Definitely I would like to see the library with more books, uh, but especially I would like to increase uh, the bilingual section. Mm -hmm. And again, the reason is because the families that we serve a lot of them, they, they don't know how to read English. Right. So, so everybody would learn in the, in the family. Yes. So, well, you're doing a great job. And thank you. Thank, oh, thank you, you for so letting much. us talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming to you from our BronxNet studios, four new shows highlighting some of the best of the Bronx has to offer. We sit down with political leaders on in the district and discuss local legislation, events, and issues. See how the community and business come together with The Bronx Now on BronxNet. Nosotros features leaders from a Latino community. Meet those who are moving to make a difference in public service, business, arts, and culture. Looking for new and exciting dining experiences? Then you'll want to savor the Bronx and try new restaurants and eateries that fill the borough with delicious dishes. We have it all, so experience the Bronx in new and fresh ways on BronxNet.
Welcome, everybody. We are open. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. You can catch me on there each and every night right after the quiet storm. You can catch me right here on open, 10 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. Let's just call it on the tens and then just keep it tuned. And we got you covered like a blanket, okay? I'm out in the community and we're all over the place because we are now open. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Lesh, legal correspondent to the morning show Open. If you have a legal question that you'd like me to answer, please send me an email at davidlesh at bronxet.org and I will address it on our Ask Your Lawyer segment. These are two of the amazing parents of these wonderful, adorable children we've been looking at, and, and one still here. So how did you find this magical place for your children? And for you, it's not just for the kids, yeah. For me, it's a great place because uh, it's, I found a place here close to my house in Hans Point, uh, where I can take my, kid, my, my two kids, where they can socialize with other kids, and they can learn things, they have a routine, and well, this place is awesome. Yeah. So I found this place because I had moved to the Bronx after, uh, two years ago, and I was desperately searching for something for her around here because I was going back and forth from my old neighborhood in Astoria. It was pretty tiring <laughs> on the train. So um, my favorite coffee place, which is Birch, opened up right here. And then when I came to their opening, Majora was there and she said, oh, there's a school right here. Um, coincidentally, the same week I had found them on the internet. And that's why I started coming over. So. And, and then we've been here ever since. It's been a year already. But you two have been, I hear, amazing contributors too. But you, the expert on the hungry caterpillar, <laughs> yes. have made this incredible and a banner that's just incredible. And I, the first time I came here, I heard about the cups. Oh. So, so can you talk about the cups a little sure. bit? Sure. Um, when Becca was born, that's my daughter. She comes here. Uh, I began like the search for non-toxic living, more natural, and. Uh, it, I kind of re-sparked the environmentalist in me, so I've been on that wheel ever since. And then when I came here and I, you know, I saw how they were with getting cups and stuff like that. Sometimes we, you know, we ran out, you know, normal. And I said, you know what? Let me bring reusable cups because that's the transition we're making at home. And then I searched the internet the same week and I found those bamboo cups. I had found previously another one, but they didn't have enough. So I found this company called Pacific Baby, and they made the bamboo cups in six packs. So I brought it in. I brought two packs, and then we have like cups for everybody. Which are beautiful, and yeah. what a great idea, yeah. too. But I also hear that you two are now forming something out of this, out of your oh, yeah. friendship here. <laughs> I, I know everything. <laughs> I hear everything. So, so what is it that you're, you're working on together? What do we do? <laughs> Tell them, tell them. Okay, so I, I've been going to the Botanical Garden every Wednesday, and she has been going separately. So when we met here, and I said, oh, we really should go outside, we should go to the Botanical Garden, you know, from here, and she said, oh, you go too? And I said, yeah, me too. So then we just kind of connected, and then every Wednesday now, we meet with other moms that are already there, and we just forage. Really, we're just around there all day. Yeah, and you all know, you have a though. beautiful glass exhibit coming up. Yeah, Do you know about yes. this. It's really yeah, yeah. it's re beautiful. I it's was beautiful. on Sunday. Oh, so you beautiful. saw it already? Oh, yeah. oh. I'm all the time so at Botanica so, Garden. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's yeah. so nice. So it's it's not just that the kids have found friends, but but yeah. you found friends. Which for me was great because I was home alone. So. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, me really I, can, I don't have family here. Like they are in Brooklyn, far away. So it's great to have people yes. to yeah, share. So that's, and how many, so you come once a week? Yes. For, for this program, and how about your kids? How do they like it? They well, love it. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, Becca was a complete, like, shy little girl, and she comes here, you saw, she touches the stars, she plays with everybody, she calls them at home, and Aww. she does the songs at home, and then she'll say everyone's name, so she's completely blossomed, like, 
socially. She was, she's been great. That is yeah, To socialize, I think, is very important. This, yeah. this place really, like, to me, you can't stay at home without kids and on right. TV. Sure, it's yeah. like, no, right. it doesn't make sense. If you, if you don't take them to the school, then take them somewhere to meet kids. Yeah. So this is a perfect place. And they're really... They're, and I mean, teachers are really great, like, too. They are, yeah. they are beautiful. They are so lovely with their kids. I know, them, yeah. I know. I know. We all yeah, fell in love them with them. The we time. want to stay here. I, my, <laughs> I have grown a grown-up daughter, but I want to come back here. Yeah, so. really. yeah I, I tell them all the time because when I took Becca for a year to the parks and those little kids around, and then I'm I'm just happy. I tell them all the time. It's so funny. I'm happy this place exists because it fosters an environment. It's safe. You know, you guys are doing incredible work here. You, you know, with the rotation with families and things like that. And most of all. It's like a community service, it's free. You don't have to like, because I found a lot of good programs for her, but unfortunately I can't afford it. So I'm just glad that there's a space where I can meet other moms and then we can enjoy different things together. Like we saw each other last Tuesday, you know, yes. and do like yeah, picnic, and, around, yeah, here, picnic yes. around here. So that's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, and thank you both. Thank you both for taking time to talk to oh, us. No but it's, it's wonderful for the whole family that <laughs> you have this. Yeah, thank you. And join us next time when we'll take you on another adventure through the world of nonprofits in the Bronx. Hello there, this is Sandra Apia. Be sure to tune in on BronxNet Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. to catch my brand new show, The Sandra Apia Show. See you then. We are together. And for the last 20 years, we have been building on a vision to share our views, our voices on our channels. We are the Bronx. We are BronxNet. I'm standing up and wearing pink because I want to make a difference in the fight against breast cancer. Join me in the American Cancer Society Real Men Wear Pink campaign of the Bronx. As the Bronx ambassador for this cause, this is very personal to me to raise awareness and money to win the battle and save lives. I've had two family members who were diagnosed with breast cancer and sadly one did not survive. More than 200,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in the United States this year, according to Montefiore.org, and many of them sadly will die. One in eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death among women. Although breast cancer in men is rare, an estimated 2,600 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer and approximately 440 will each die this year. On average, every two minutes a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer and one woman will die of breast cancer every 13 minutes. Over 2.8 million breast cancer survivors are alive in the United States today. Real Men Wear Pink of the Bronx is part of the Making Strides campaign in its fight against breast cancer. I'm urging you to join me in this fight and send a donation to the American Cancer Society. You can call Lizette Dorado at 347-656-1887. And remember, real men wear pink. Thank you. <laughs>